Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Mark, just in case you're new here, and I'm a cinematographer based in the UK. Today I want to talk about OpenAI's new video model, text-based video model, Sora. And what a text-based video model is, is you input some text, a description, click generate, it will generate a video according to your text. So let's get into it. So what is OpenAI? Now you probably heard of ChatGPT, OpenAI are the same people that brought you ChatGPT and now they're bringing you a video text-based AI model called Sora. Now it's not available just yet but they've released some clips and I have to say they're amazing. They look great. Yes you still can see some kind of if you look closely you can see that they're not quite there yet but let's take a look at what there was a year ago maybe you've seen this maybe you haven't it was doing the rounds will smith eating spaghetti you know one of the first big ai videos to blow up it doesn't look great <laughs> it looks like something from your nightmare now it's cool and it was cool to see at the time but yeah you couldn't use this so where are we now a year later this is where we're at. And I have to say the leap in just one year is kind of crazy. Where do I see this going? I'm a camera operator, you know, I make my living from, from filming, using a camera, shooting videos. So how do I feel about this new text-based video model? I'm excited, to be honest. This kind of stuff gets me excited because where is it gonna go? How do I feel it's gonna affect the industry? You know, the camera operators around the world, there's a lot of different industries that use camera operators. It's not just film, there's music videos, there's corporate films, there's museum work. There's loads of different categories of this industry where people work and, and how is it gonna affect all those industries? Now, the first place that I see this affecting is stock video websites. And what a stock video website is, in case you were wondering, it's a site you can go to, you can pay a subscription or you can pay per video. One of the biggest places right now is probably Artgrid. I don't know if you've heard of Artlist, but Artgrid is their video side of things. The company I work for subscribed to that website and we've used it on a number of occasions where you need stock footage. You don't have the budget for that particular video to go out and shoot that, or maybe you can't shoot that. So you use these sites to try and get footage as close to what you need as possible. So first and foremost, you know, the place that this is going to affect are places like Artgrid. Instead of having stock footage, they'll have a video AI model and you will type in what you want. The more information you give it, the better, and it will pump out some videos according to your text. And you can fine tune that, rework it to try and get the shots that you need or as close to those shots as possible. Then eventually, maybe a bit further down the line, stuff like this could be built into actual editing programs like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut or DaVinci. You'll go into your effects and you'll be like, generate video, type in what you need and away you go. We've already seen this with pictures and Adobe with their picture AI Firefly where text-based pictures, you can go on the website and you can input some text and it will generate some images. And there's options that you can tick depending on what you want and it will fine tune that image to what you want. Maybe you want a realistic looking image, maybe you want an animated image and so on and so on. I'd imagine this, the video AI is gonna probably progress in a similar way that it will give you various options. You'll be able to select what you want it to look like, what resolution, what aspect ratio, and it will give you a video as close as possible to what your description is. So first and foremost, that's the industry I see it affecting. Now, I don't know any camera operators or DPs that just do stock footage. Most people I know, you know, they cover various parts of the industry and that's probably an avenue that some people go to as a way to generate some extra income. I haven't done stock footage personally, but I've definitely thought about it in the past and it did seem like a, a valuable way to make some money. You know, if you can shoot a lot of stock footage that you can put out there, then that was probably a great way for you to make money. A lot of the stuff I shoot is paid for by a client, so I don't own that video footage. That video footage belongs to the client and I can't do anything with that because I've been paid to film. So now, where's it gonna go? You know, if we look at the leap we've had from year one to year two, it's pretty insane. So what's that jump gonna be like to year three or year four or year five? This stuff is probably gonna be readily available and used by a lot of people. So how do I feel about that as a camera operator? Maybe I'm naive, but no, I'm not worried. You know, a lot of the stuff I shoot involves other people. You know, if you're working with clients, 
they've got people they want in the films, they've got products that they want to display. And this right now, I don't think is going to replace that. You know, I think this will in the immediate future replace those stock footage sites where you're looking for a specific shot of something and maybe it's a one off and it's, you know, it's not a full sequence necessarily. However, you know, further down the line, this stuff is going to get better and better. In the future, a couple of years, maybe you could give it photos of a location. Maybe you could give it photos of an actor. Now, obviously, you would need permission for all of this. You're not going to be able to just go off and give it pictures of Robert Downey Jr. and AI generate him in your film because most likely they're going to protect against that because that's just stealing someone's identity. There will be safeguarding built into these programs, these AI generative models. For now, I don't think it's going to replace that part of things. So am I worried? Not yet. Not really. I'm more excited than worried. But let's jump ahead to, you know, five or ten years down the line. Where is this video AI going to be at? it's probably going to get to a point that it can do a lot of that stuff. A lot of the stuff that it can't do right now, it will be able to. And it's probably going to, you know, be built into software. So let's, for instance, say you've shot a movie. In that movie, you've realized in the edit stage, oh, I wish I had a close up of that person picking up the back or that person putting a gun under the table, whatever. I'd imagine you're going to be able to click analyze type in what you want, it's going to look at your footage that you've shot and it's going to generate the shot that you need. That's one area that it might help you. And I think with a lot of this software, first and foremost, it becomes useful to the people around it because it might be able to do something that you didn't have time for. And that's where this software is going to be useful to people that are creating video content. Will it outright replace camera operators, cinematographers in the future? Probably eventually, yeah. It may well do. Now, I think that, you know, Hollywood films are probably going to be getting made for years to come. I don't think there's any immediate danger to that industry. Right now, it's probably just going to allow people to make more video content. Those people that maybe didn't have the budget before will be making more video content now. I think there'll still be plenty of people out there in all these areas, in all the different parts of the industry that will require camera operators to come and do a very specific job. So I don't think this is something that's going to happen in the immediate future. But now let's talk about maybe, you know, 10 years down the line. Where is this stuff going to be 20 years down the line? So what I think, what I believe is eventually it probably will replace all of it. And I'll explain why. Imagine watching the Avengers instead of seeing Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Imagine that you see yourself. Imagine that you see an advert for a car and you're the one driving it. If we think about TV, film, adverts, all of that stuff, it's always first and foremost selling you something. When they make a film, they want characters that you align with because then you'll watch the film. The next step of that, to me, naturally feels like you're going to be just seeing yourself and the people you know in those situations. Now, maybe I'm wrong. It definitely feels like that's the way things could go. And if that helps companies sell things to you or make you watch things, then they're going to most likely do that. Now, I think there'll be a lot of kickback and probably rightly so to prevent that and to make sure that people still have a place in these industries. But eventually with time, if something becomes cheaper to do without those things, eventually it will be done that way. It will just be, if people can make these films for a lot cheaper using AI, the chances are they will. Now, maybe it won't affect Hollywood and the big industry first, but imagine you're a film student and you're studying film. What if you have the tools to type into a video AI your ideas and generate those films? People would watch those films and and what it really does is it's going to make things more accessible to a lot of people. Now I'm talking about this is the end game rather than the immediate future. I don't think this stuff's coming in right now, but I can't help but feel that that's the way that things will go. And I think, you know, it's a generational thing. Maybe my generation, generations above me won't want to accept this, but the younger generation, they'll just be what they expect. I always think back to when planes were first invented. There must have been a generation of people that were like, I'm not getting on that plane. You must be crazy to think that I'm going to get in that and fly to another country. And now we get on planes without even thinking about it. We put our trust in those planes. We don't even give it a second thought. Naturally, that feels like how things 
go. Maybe our generation will fight for the for the arts and for this and for that. Maybe the next generation won't care so much if they can get films with themselves in it. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it'll be, I mean, I would like to see that. That's pretty cool. Something else that I'm massively interested in, video games. How is this kind of AI going to affect video games? It's going to make characters that you meet in the video game specific to you. Maybe it'll take the game in a direction that appeals to you over someone else. Maybe the quests or the missions that you do will be specific to you and the characters you talk to, you'll talk to them, you'll see yourself in the video game. That excites me. That That's the kind of stuff that I always remember when I was a kid and I was like playing Tomb Raider with the blocky graphics. I always thought about the future and I always thought one day it's going to look real and that's going to be crazy. You know, we're pretty much getting there with video games. It's, it's starting to look lifelike. It's so impressive and I can't help but feel like this technology is just going to elevate that. It's going to make it appeal to more people because it's going to be more specific to them. So the short term, you know what we're looking at now, it's easy to kind of look at if someone tells you, oh, that's video AI and, and be like, yeah, well, you know, it's not there yet, but it's not going to be long till it's at that level. And yeah, 10, 20 years down the line, maybe not even that long. It's going to be in such a place that you'll be able to put in text or feed it photographs or feed it other videos. And it's going to be able to give you stuff that you cannot tell the difference between that and something that someone shot. So I'll go back to my first question, you know, am I worried about this? Yeah, I think there's always that element that you're worried, you know, you don't want to be obsolete. But I'm also excited for this technology. You know, this channel, I'm a camera nerd, but I'm also a tech nerd. I love technology. It gets me really excited about the future, you know. I'm super hyped. I can't wait to see where things go. I'm sure that as a as a people, we'll figure stuff out. As AI comes in and replaces more jobs, maybe we'll get that universal basic income and we can all sit on chairs that float like Wally. Wouldn't that be great? We talk to other people still, but, <laughs> but floating chairs, pretty cool. You've heard me waffle now, just waffle at you about AI. I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. Are you nervous? Are you scared? How do you feel about this? How Are you a camera operator or a cinematographer? How does, you know, you worried about how you're going to make money going forward? Is this something that's already affecting you in some way? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts on it. I'd love to chat with people about this in the comments. I tell my girlfriend and she just shuts off. She, as soon as I start talking about AI, she just glazes over. So yeah, I wanna to talk to you guys. Let me know what you think about it. Put it down in the comments. Let's have a discussion. That's about it. That's about everything I've got to say. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys and also hit that notification bell. Also last week I did a video on my YouTube setup took you through all the lights that I'm using here and, and how I do. It's a very small room, this, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, check it out. Check out my other content, a lot of camera-based content, comparison videos, that kind of stuff. And keep watching because i got some cool videos coming up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.